Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Matthew 24, verse 1. So he says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the building of the temple. So they were trying to show him how glorious it looked, right? Look, hey, check this out. Look at how beautiful the temple to the Most High is. Come on, read. Verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Right, because he's about to go in to let you know that these things are going to pass away. Anything that's that's carnal, that's all that stuff is going to pass away, right? So go ahead, come on. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? And this has always been a question for us, right? And not just um, us today, but you can see back then that even the disciples, everybody always wanted to know, right? Whenever a glimpse of something came up, when somebody was speaking about the end times, it fascinates us, even non-believers, right? It's something about understanding the end. Everybody wants to know the secrets of revelation, um, you know, some with Daniel, some with Ezekiel. What does this mean? When is the end going to be? When is it going to come? And that's something that's in us, right? Um, righteously, those of us who are righteous, we want to know that because we want to know when the establishment of the kingdom is coming. And that should be our intent. Other people, they don't even know why they want to know. Right? People who are wickedness, they want to know because Christianity teaches you, you can wait to the last minute. So they want to know how much time they have left to go ahead and continue on in sin and evil. But when it comes to those of us in righteousness, right? We wanna know because we wanna know based on what the prophecies tell us, what we should be looking for and how our behavior should be. That should be the proper motivation. Hold this and go to Mark 13 and one. Because in Mark, he tells you exactly which disciples wanted to know this. And he says the same thing, right? So it wasn't all the disciples that came to him and asked them this, right? It was just some of them. And remember, they said they came to him privately. So they didn't go in front of all the rest. They didn't go in front of everybody. They went to him privately to ask these questions, right? Go ahead, Mark 13 and 1. St. Mark chapter 13, verse 1. And as, he, and as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest, seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Right, so he's trying to put it in their spirit to remember that the time is short, right? Like, like the captain was bringing out in, in the prayer, the time is short. And letting you know that don't get so puffed up in what we're building here. There's instructions that we need to follow for what, if we really believe the end times are coming, and y'all have heard me speak about this very often, if, if your true intent was that you thought it was the end, then where are the behaviors that the scripture speaks about behind that? What's the point of acknowledgement of signs of the end times if not for us to hasten to be more diligent, to make our calling and election more sure, right? 
Come on, read on. And as he sat upon the Mount Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when shall you we... there, it was Peter, James, John, and Andrew were the ones that asked them. So not all, the point I bring that out is, it wasn't all the disciples. Some were contending their spirit to know that it was for a time that was to come, what Christ was talking about. Others, not so much. Now, does that mean there's a sin in wanting that or having that curiosity? No. But I'm showing you that even amongst the disciples, you're seeing those same spirits today, especially in light of what's going on um, with this pandemic, right? With the COVID-19. And it's pertinent that I bring this stuff out because, again, me understanding here in Phoenix, not, not all of you may have been exposed to certain classes and certain topics like we have. Not everybody's strength in the scriptures is the same as some of us, right? So it's relevant that we bring these things out to make sure that y'all understand what you're seeing and what, how our actions should be, right? So he's letting you know it wasn't all of them, all right? Go ahead, read verse 4. Verse 4. Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? All right, so this is what they were asking him. Now, let's go back. Matthew 24. So in Mark, you see it's like a little different wording, right? Sometimes some of the other Gospels, I've mentioned this before, there's similar accounts between most of the Gospels, right? John kind of being the exception somewhat. Um, but uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you'll find almost everything like um, that, that Christ did that was very pertinent, but told from the perspective of either Matthew, Mark, or Luke, right? So now back here, let's read uh, verse 4 now, Matthew 24 and 4. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to, unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right. So, why didn't he just answer them? Because he's got up, he's about to go in, and we're going to cover a good chunk of Matthew 24 today. Why didn't he just tell them something like, Oh, you know, no man knoweth the hour, this, that, and the other? He knew their intent. All right. And their intent was is that they got a little scared when he said that. And he wanted to basically shore them up. Because remember, he's, they asked him this privately. Don't forget that part. So when you start reading Matthew 24 here, this wasn't something on the mount. He was saying this to those disciples that spoke to him about this. So he was shoring up their spirit, which Lord's will I aim to do today by the class that's being brought out. So don't get the part. Don't Listen, it says it in Matthew 24, said it in Mark. They asked him privately. So this wasn't Matthew, the Matthew, the 24th chapter was not said to the masses. All right. This was said to those disciples that he spoke to. Right. So he said, take heed that no man deceive you. They asked him, when was the time? When would all these things be fulfilled? And his response was, take heed that no man deceive you. What does he mean? Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 6. Let's watch this because I'm going to bring it up to today. Y'all, y'all weren't wrong. I'm going to bring it up to today. It's the same vibe. It's the same vibration. All right. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of, of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So in today's times, I'm going to focus on this because this is where everybody's going crazy. He says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Yes, that means, right, we shouldn't let anybody deceive us with vain words. And what are the vain words? Vain words, biblically, are any words that are not biblically based. Simple as that. I'm going to keep it based on that. Anything else that's not referenced to the proper understanding in the scripture, those are vain words. Who are the biggest proliferators of those vain words today? The media. The media. And I'm going to show a definition in a moment. I'm going to try to do my screen share here. Hopefully this works well. I'm going to break down the media because the scripture doesn't call them the media. There's terms like mouth of the dragon, prognosticators, the scripture calls them. They call them diviners, and they also call them prophets, but not prophets of God, right? Because essentially that's what they try to do. And it's not just media. I'm not saying mainstream media, alternative media. It's all media. It's vain words if it's not biblically based. So we must be built up biblically 
for when this information comes to us to be able to understand what we're seeing, right? That's the whole, really, the, the essence of what this class is going to be about for you to understand that, all right? Because there's a lot of information flying around, and I've seen people posting this, that, and the other. Someone got a connection with the government. My aunt's aunt was in a meeting, all that. And, and I'm going to tell you something. If you're, if you're hip to it and you're not nervous, you can read between the lines and you'll see. Now, I'm not saying that that stuff that comes out isn't always accurate information, but it's real easy to look at something and see if it's something that's just being perpetuated by the internet for whatever reason. Um, it's like that show Messiah, right? Um, I had told you that within the first few episodes, what I liked about it was it was showing you how the CIA was trying to control what was on the internet, right? Control the flow of information. I was watching something else um, I fell asleep on it last night, uh, Death Wish, the remake with Bruce Willis. And there's a part where they caught him on camera and the cop's like, hey, well, let's be discreet. You know, don't go uploading this. She said, oh, I uploaded it two hours ago. I'm getting all types of hits. The point is we have this viral environment where people want to spread misinformation, right? And even your certified legitimate media outlets, even your alternative media outlets, right? They're vain words because they're not biblically based. But unfortunately, that's where we get, that's the medium, right? And that's what we're going to go into with the media and the definitions. That's the medium in which we get that information. But it's so important. This is why Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you. Because the easy thing is just don't listen, right? But then you're not informed. So he says, what you have to do is take heed. Take heed to what? To the misinformation, all right? So let me try to share my screen here. All right. So... It's the media, right? So it's the media. And the media tells you here simply, right? When you look at it, it says the main means, it's the main, this is why I'm highlighting it, the main means of mass communication, broadcasting, publishing, the internet, and it's regarded collectively. It's the mm -hmm. main means, right? You go into it a little more, and it says the means of communication as radio and television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, the internet that reach or influence people widely. So it expands upon the Google definition that influence those vain words. They reach and influence people widely. Right. And then, uh, hold on. So over here, notice it says plural of medium, right? And then it also says plural of medium as the second definition. Media is actually the plural of medium. So I said, let me look up the definition of medium. And it says, uh, hold on, I got to go to see more. So number six says an intervening agency, means or instrument by which something is conveyed or accomplished. Number seven, one of the means or channels of general communication, information, or entertainment in society, such as newspapers, radio, or television. But medium also has another definition, and it all stems from the same thing. And number 10 says, it's a person through whom the spirits of the dead are alleged to be able to contact the living. It's divinations. It's divining. And these people with their vain words try to intuitively come up with something. And later when we get into the de definition of a diviner, you're going to see it's not always demons and witchcraft, but they say they try to come up with stuff intuitively. Intuition is vain also because it's not based on Bible prophecies. So we must be mindful when you're consuming this information that you do it through the, through the it's like you need the enzyme of the scriptures to chew on that cud. Right. Some of y'all need to take enzymes to help break down lactose if you're lactose intolerant. Some need stuff to help break down carbohydrates or whatever it is. It's you need the spiritual enzymes to digest what's being brought to you because media is plural for medium and medium. Historically, the roots of that word go into somebody who divines that they're basically supposed to be in the know because of divination, right? Hey, Gap, Gap, that's, that's actually real heavy. That's a heavy, heavy point that you just, that, that you just brought up because um, most of us, you know, when we have a, a break from work or if we're just sitting on the toilet, 
you know, whatever. What do we do? We go to Facebook, we go to Instagram, we go to everything else. So we're being consumed with those things more than everything else. Yeah, it definitely is a consumption and it's, and, and it's subtle. You don't realize it. Hey, I fall prey to it. So it's mm -hmm. hard to say, let me get away from it because then you feel like you're not as informed as you should be. But right. if you're going to be someone who's going to dabble in that, you need to make sure that you're grounded. This is why Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you, right? So that's media definition. Let's read Ephesians 5 and 6 again, and then we're going to go to Jeremiah 29, right? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And the Lord is visiting the earth with wrath with this virus, all right? Whether it's man-made, patented, genetic, God is in charge of all of that. And he gives the power to do those things. Just like he gave our oppressors their power and authority via Satan to put us in captivity with yokes of iron, to make us forget our heritage, make sure that you believe it, that he's giving them the power and authority because that's their role. We're at the part in the script. We're at the part in the movie where Esau releases the virus, right? right. So whether it's man-made or something that just derived from bats or whatever they try to tell you, listen, it's all of the Lord and you better understand that thing, right? So what he says is don't be deceived by those vain words because what's going to happen from it, and as we're going to read later, the scripture talks about for fear and for trying to really discern the times, many will fall away. So you fall into a stage of disobedience and you lose your spiritual wits over this stuff. And you don't keep yourself grounded in the rock that's Christ, right? So let's go to Jeremiah 29 and 8. We're going to come back to Ephesians. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets or, and, I'm sorry, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. Read verse 9. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. All right, there's a lot of stuff being said in these two verses, right? So verse eight, first we're gonna deal with because I'm telling you that media is your diviner. So I'm gonna share my screen again. And we're gonna look at the definition of diviner, all right? So I have diviner here. And it says a person who practices divination, a soothsayer, right? So these are one of those that we gotta kind of go down the rabbit hole and go to some more definitions. So then it says, soothsayer. It says, a person who predicts the future by magical, intuitive, or more rational means. That is your media. Because maybe it's not magic, but they try to deduce, they try to predict what's going to happen. Oh, mm -hmm. we're doing this. This is going to happen. Hey, you, this is why you had them brothers in the mother camps talking about FEMA camps years ago. It says right. intuitive or more rational means. And they're seemingly rational because they're trying to tell you that, well, see the writing on the wall. We're looking at data. We're looking at this. We're looking at that. At the end of the day, so what if those things are happening? Christ warned us about those things. So when you hear them from the media, so what? But people are bugging out. People are getting nervous. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. We're going to read the definition of fear later. Hey, Cap, if anything, that should make those that are wavering and in the wind get, get their faith up even more. That's well, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And that's, I think, uh, uh, you said something like that in the prayer, if I'm not mistaken, I'm right, about establishing our faith during these times, right? Yeah. So yep. it's important that you understand that, brothers and sisters, because it's talking about um, the media and how they push these things out to you and you have people who have all these conspiracies in their head and this, that, and the other. But guess what? If you tell them, okay, you know what? I believe you. That's true. Now what? They have nothing else to say. Right. There's no solution behind what they're... Right. So what? Oh, they're going to declare martial law. Okay, and? Right. Oh, this is this. Okay, and? What does the Bible say that you should be doing? Exactly. And Christ already warned us about that. Right, and Cap, real quick, if you let's take CNN and Fox for an example, right? 
CNN is going to talk about and rationalize everything dealing with far left stuff, right? right. Or democratic stuff. Right. Fox is going to uh, uh, rationalize and talk about and sensationalize everything dealing with Trump and the right. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. You know where the truth is in the middle? The Bible. And right. The, 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 and I'm going to tell you the, something. As I'm reading this now, I didn't have this scripture here, but I want to bring this out. Know this, that it says soothsayer, that it's something soothing, right? <laughs> you know what that makes me think about as you brought out that left and right thing? Let's yep. get Isaiah 30 and 9. Yep. <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesying deceits. Right. So it's talking about that you, they don't want, to, and when it says those seers and those prophets, it's talking about the real prophets, the real seers, those of us who are versed and understand the scriptures. It says when it comes to us, they say, don't prophesy unto us right, right things. Don't right. tell us this, that, and the other. We want smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Tell me lies, sweet little lies, like that song, right? Hey, Cap, you know how that's true? Because when we out there teaching about the word, what do we hear? A lot of people, others come up and say, but what about the FEMA camps? Because right. they're following the news. Right, they're, right. They're, they're following the news. Too much. Saying, their thing right. is FEMA cat. And you see you see them start going off on stuff that has to do with conspiracy theories. Yes, exactly. And so notice it says smooth things, and that's a soothsayer. It's a smoothing, calming thing. So also when you look at this definition, it says prognosticator. And it says to foretell from signs or symptoms to give an indication of an advance. And the scripture talks about those monthly prognosticators. When we read, we, when we did the class on Babylon, I brought that scripture out. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it was Isaiah. Uh, I can't remember the chapter, but I know it was like verse 13 or something like that. And it talks about the diviners and the monthly prognosticators. And it says how those, those things are going to come to naught. All right. So let's go back to the scriptures. All right. And now... Uh, let's uh, continue on. Let's read Isaiah. Let, I'm sorry. Let's stay in Jeremiah 29. I want you to read verse 8 again. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners. In this case, I'm talking about your media. And media can include you, you camp browsers who are watching other camps, all right? Because that's a form of it, that you're watching all these, because right, I say media and people are like, well, I don't watch CNN, I don't watch Fox News, but you're watching other stuff and you're getting it through that medium, right? Come on, read. And your diviners that be in the midst of you, deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. Ah, so this part is heavy, this last part. It says, don't hearken to your dreams, which you cause to be dream. Basically, you're all freaked out over all these divinations, all this stuff the media is telling you, and now you start having these creepy dreams, and you think it's the Lord telling you that something prophetic is going to happen to Israel. You think all of a sudden that the Lord is dealing with you in dreams, all right? That you must think highly mighty of yourself, and you must be so holier than thou and on point if the Lord is going to show some random brother or sister some dream about the bigger things that's to come. Christ said, we're not going to get a sign except for the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And that's what we're going into today. So I'm not saying that there aren't some among us that might have something that comes to them spiritually, but you need to better damn examine yourself. If you just some random brother or sister got no works in this thing, and all of a sudden the Lord, the Lord don't deal with brothers and sisters like that. The ones that he's revealed his stuff to is people who have shown a level of devotion to him. So it says, don't fall prey to your dreams that you caused to be dreamed. God didn't bring you those dreams. You did because of the ruminations in your mind, the craziness going on in your head. Mm -hmm. God has not sent them. Let's get Jeremiah 23 and 21. Crap, you got anything for Job there in your, in your notes? Uh, no, I didn't bring that out just because I got a ton of scriptures just for the sake for the sake of time. You could you can bring it if you're gonna be quick with it, but let me get this one first. Jeremiah 23, 21. 
I don't want to Jeremiah know. chapter 23, verse 21. I have not sent the prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Right. So it says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. These media, these people online, you know why you know he hasn't sent them? Because their words are vain. They're not biblically based, all right? He says, I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied anyway, all right? He said, but if they stood in his council and they caused his people to hear my words, then they would have turned them away from their evil ways and the evil of their doings. Because this is all going to circle back to if you really believe all the prognosticating that you're hearing, then your actions should be indicative of that. And trust me, I don't see that. I don't see that amongst a lot of brothers and sisters where, where there's a step up in your understanding. You know, I saw a meme the other day. Somebody was saying something about they were doing it based on like um, business mostly. But like, hey, if after this, like 30 days that stuff is limited, some of y'all ain't at work or whatever. You don't either start a new business, pick up a new skill or increase your knowledge. Then it wasn't all these excuses that you put in front of yourself is you. That's the problem. So you should be taking this time to build your study game up. You should be taking this time to get yourself more well-versed. Everybody's always talking about, damn, I ain't got time to study like that. I ain't got time. Hey, I saw the, um, the soldier Nathaniel. He had the, uh, he said the, the quarantine package. I saw, <laughs> he, 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 he the council. He got his who's who. He got his Zondervans stepping his game up, you know? That's it. And brothers was like, yo, let me get that. I'm like, bro, you go get it. I've been saying get that for the longest. What you talking about? Trying to yeah, cop like that off for free, right? Like he got it for free. <laughs> That's the time now that you can sit down and, and do your own studies. Now, as you read your four chapters a day and a name comes up, go into that who's who. Be like, who's this? Go into that Bible dictionary. Say, who's this? You know? Did you want to bring that thing in, Joe? No, 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 of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Come on. Be okay. not ye therefore partakers with them. So don't be partakers of all that stuff that's floating around, right? Let, let Make sure that you're able to measure it through the lens of the scriptures. And if you're not, then leave that to your, your spiritual leaders to guide you in that. But with enough understanding, because it might be some among us that's talking crap that's not based on any scriptures, all right? So be mindful of that as well, all right? Come on, read. For ye sometimes, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For if we were sometime in darkness, meaning... When we were in the world, before we knew we were Israelites, before we started repenting, keeping our faith in Christ as the black Messiah, all right, we were in darkness. But he says, we're the children of light now. So walk like it, act like it. Troubled times are coming that have been foretold. We're in that time of trouble. And I'm going to open up something to y'all today. That time of great tribulation has begun, marked by this pestilence. I'm going to tell you that with a surety right now. I'm not saying it's the end. The scripture tells you there's still so much more that has to happen. But when it says a time of trouble, like never there was, when we read that scripture later, ever since the creation, this has been an unprecedented event in, in modern world. Because yes, you had the bubonic plague. Yes, you had the Spanish flu. You want to know what's different between now and then? The level of, of Esau's witchcraft, their science, and all this stuff, because you, you can say, all right, you look to the history of the bubonic plague, that stuff was coming out through, through the unsanitary water wells that they had and the infestation of the rats. Okay, you look at the Spanish flu, they didn't have the means of communication and tracing and things like that to do this now. I was reading an article later today, they said, I, I can't believe that this is the richest country in the world and this is what's going on here. I can't believe that this is what's going on in the world with this global economy. Basically, their pride of their heart have deceived them. And they said, this shouldn't be happening. 
So you know that now that thing is opening up for these times of trouble like never have been, right? And we're going to read about it when we talk about the pestilences. So okay. we are those children of light. Get Isaiah 9 and 2. Okay, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Yeah. And just remember, the scripture says like a woman in travail. All right? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Attractions get quicker and quicker and quicker. So based on what Captain said, all right, yes, this is the beginning. Oh, make no mistake about it, of tribulations. But guess what? If you think you still got time, that's between you and the most high, all right? The contractions could come so quick, and then that baby could come out. I'm going to leave it at that. Those who have wisdom and, and, and understand, understand. Oh, well, we're going to talk about that because the scripture, when the scripture talks about the days will be shortened, a lot of times we just talk about, oh, God loves us, so he's shortening the days. Right. That mm -hmm. scripture is specifically for when these times of tribulation come. So guess what? They're going to last as long as he needs them to, but not enough to all Israel's destroyed. So be mindful of that. And this virus is not going to destroy the Israelites. Trust, trust in that. All right. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 2. The book of, of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. That is us. That is the Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, natives, those who are scattered and fit the curses. Come on. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. But we should not, this place, we dwell in the land of the shadow of death. So when you see death, when you see these tribulations, why are we deceived? We should not be, because we have been shown a great light. And that light is Christ. That light is these commandments, the volume of the book, who we are and who salvation is for. Let's go back to Matthew 24. And read verse 4 again. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So we went thoroughly through what he meant by this, right? Come on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars. He said, wait, hang on. So he said, many will come in my name and say, I'm Christ and shall deceive many. You got to understand something. And I'm going to give the sense on this real quick. They may not always say it's religious or that they're Christ, but they will come in their own name, the scripture tells you. So get John 5 and 43. We're coming back to Matthew to <coughs> prove that. John 5 and 43. The book of St. John, chapter 5, and verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And do you know when you do that? You do that each time where you take the science, oppositions of it. Yep. You do that each time that you let the media run rampant in your head. You do that each time that within yourself, you try to number the time. Because I'm going to tell you something, later I'm going to bring it out when it says the days will be short. And like I said, short to you is not short to the most high. Short to uh, Amariah is not the same short to me. Short to Aparium is not the same. So who do we go by? We go by what the most high means when he says short in the days. He's going to shorten them or lengthen them at his leisure for his thing. So be mindful of that, that because time is one of the most abstract things that we try to bring into subjection. I'm not going to get too heavy into that, but time, and, and, and if you remember the, the little brief class I did on how the Israelites number time, it's all relative to how God is the ancient of days. They, they, there's an understanding of time that we'll never grasp. That concept of it, life, death, shortness, days, number. Yeah, we put minutes to it. We put hours. That's all us just trying to simplify something that can't be simplified. All right? right. So the measurement of time has always been, that's another one. People want to know the end, and that falls right within in time. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived, the scriptures say. Read verse 44. So he said, you're going to receive people that will come in their own name. So when he says that many will come and say, I'm Christ, they don't always say I'm Christ. They'll come and say, I'm Chris Cuomo. I'm Laura Ingram. I'm right. uh, whoever the hell, I'm Alex Jones, whoever the hell you like to watch. Right. And you receive them, but not what the Holy Scriptures say. Read. 
Verse 44. Well, they'll tell you I'm from this alphabet camp or that alphabet camp. And you, or I'm this high priest or this chief high apostle. And you'll receive that. Come on, read verse 44. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? You know what I think about with that one? I think about those comedic brothers, how before they go to debate each other, they, they like basically gassing each other. Oh, I love your academia. Yeah, I love yours. Yeah, I love this. And they esteem each other's honor more than the honor of God. And that's the same thing with the media too. They, they, because let me tell you something, a lot of these alternative media, guess where they get their information from? None of them are reporters in the field. None of them have a team. What they do is they browse through everybody else's work and then they, and then they try to decode that. Those are the same nuts that'll take the Bible and say the Bible's talking about Nephilim and everything else and all this other stuff like that. Blessing and cursing coming out of their mouth. So this is why you got to be careful, brothers and sisters. You got to be rooted and sound in this light. All those other people walk in darkness. We don't, right? So let's go back to Matthew 24. And verse 5, John 5, 43 is, is a strong precept for that to let you know they're not always going to say that it's religious or that they come and that I'm Christ. They're going to come in their own name, but let you believe that they have some sort of inside track or knowledge, right? Matthew 20. Trust me, we know everything that we need to know at this point. Nobody knows more than us. The media don't know more than us. Uh, uh, all these people on the internet, they don't know more than us if you understand these prophecies. Matthew 24 and 6. When the scripture tell you that, more things are shown on us to us than men understand. Matthew 24 and 6. Matthew chapter 24 verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Everybody likes to part with wars and rumors of war. You know how much that's always going on? Everybody was getting all crazy over Iran right now and how quiet it is. Now, don't sleep on that. That don't mean that things won't escalate. But it says, don't be troubled. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. It says, see that you be not troubled. Meaning, you, there's things that you need to do to make sure that you're not troubled by this news. Come on. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And we've been having wars and rumors of wars for years. So going into how long, how much time is left, all I'll tell you is, remember what uh, I believe it's in Ezra's, where he says, uh, we basically got a half an hour left, right? Yep. He says the 10th yep. part is yep. gone, and a, and a part of the 11th is gone, right? But that can mean anything. That can mean 100 years. That can mean 500 years. That, the time doesn't matter. Your behavior should be the same. And, and, and again, Lord's will, we get to that later if we have time, all right? Where when Christ talks about he's going to come after lightning and this, that, and the other, there, uh, I'm going to bring out a scripture today that's probably oft overlooked. I, I haven't heard it a lot when it comes out when we speak about that in classes. But if you've done your reading, you've read it, where he actually gives you, it's in Luke, and he tells you that because I'm coming as a thief in the night, that means that your work needs to be like, you know, like if the boss is coming by, you know when to take your naps. Some of you brothers mm -hmm. got those jobs like that, right? Like you got security gigs where you can take a nap. All right, the boss comes by every every 15 minutes. I could, I could sleep for 12 and then, whatever it is. Oh, the boss ain't gonna see me. So I don't gotta, I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna milk this so I can get my hours. So I'm gonna be slow right here. Oh, but he's coming by now. So you, you're gonna adjust your behavior by knowing that. Where, that Listen, if you feel that there's a sense of urgency, what if I told you there was 500 years left, should that change your sense of urgency? No. But some brothers and sisters will roll at that. You know, some, that, of all, some of y'all told you there's 10 days left and y'all still won't get yourself together. Right. You know what's heavy, Cap? Um, time was literally created for us. Yeah. Like... We, 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 we can evaluate everything based upon time. Hey, you know what? In 15 minutes, be here. And you know what? I get off work at 6, 15 p.m., whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Time was literally created to give us this sense of whatever. But the most I don't do with time, like how we deal with time. Nope. So when he says he's coming back as a thief in the night, he can't put a time to that because he don't see time. Right. So, right. so operating with that sense of urgency that he can come back literally tomorrow in one hour from now, like, 
Yeah, like yeah. it's to it, us, it's different. time. You know when right. he knows when he's coming back? It's not a date he has in his head. Right, exactly. It's exactly. An action of world events that he's, he's going to institute. So when this back. Thing, when these steps have happened that he's allowed to happen, that's when he's gonna come. And right. it's not that it, there's no time limit to that per se, based on the way we understand it. Um, Heavy. Uh, so keep reading in Matthew, verse seven. Matthew chapter 24, verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, so we've gone through this a bunch of times, but I want to focus on pestilences, pestilences. I'm going to share my screen again so we can look at this definition. All right. And we're going to go to pestilence. All right. And it says pestilence, a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating. Coronavirus, <laughs> that's what it's talking about. The coronavirus. It says something that is destructive or pernicious, a contagious or infectious epidemic. And then look, they give an example of the bubonic plague. This is what they're referencing it to, or the Spanish flu, like they called it, right? So now we got the Chinese respiratory virus, okay? I was laughing because they were getting on Trump because he was calling it the Chinese virus. He was like, it's from China. So I'm calling it from it's China. It's from China. <laughs> That's how we did it. So it's letting you know those pestilences dealing with disease. This is a virulent and devastating disease. So I'm letting you know that we're seeing those events. You're seeing those times, right? Read on, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Ah, and here is the point. Here is a heavy point I said earlier that make no mistake about it, that uh, what you're seeing here with this virus is that time of trouble. So I need to look up the definition of beginning, right? Because you think we know it, right? It's real simple, right? The point at which something begins, something starts. But it mm. says the first part, the first part. I like that one because it says the first part letting you know that the jump off of this virus, make no mistake about it, yes, it is a sign. It is a sign because it's different than what happened with H1N1. It's different than what happened with all the different ones that were more recently here. This is an unprecedented thing. Who in their lifetimes, even the oldest of us right now, maybe in Phoenix, right? Maybe the oldest member we got might be in their 60s, right? Maybe, right? Nobody's seen something like this. This, this, these measures they're taking, all this stuff that they're doing, how, how everybody's kind of bugging out, toilet paper not being in there, paper towel, everybody's freaking the hell out. So it's letting you know that what you're seeing with this is the first part. There were more parts to this, brothers and sisters, yet the end is not come. There were more parts to this. But make no mistake, this is the first part of those troubling times. Read on. We're going to go down to verse 14. Then, verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Has this part happened yet? The first part was seeing those rumors, those wars, those earthquakes in diverse places, that pestilence. So guess what? This hasn't happened yet. But if you're freaked out about this pestilence, right, and you know that that was that 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 was a short thing to come, and you're seeing prophecy be revealed, are you ready for what he's saying here? Read on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my namesake. Right, come on. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Come on. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And that's, that's, what you're, that's what we're going into right now. That's the times that we're starting to move into. But understand, there's more parts to this other than just this pestilence, right? Come on, read. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 
but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So he's letting you know that there's a bunch of other pieces that have to happen before the end comes. Namely, which this delivering up to be afflicted and to be killed for his name's sake, right? And make no mistake about it, we're nearing there. But the heavy part that's happened is that you've seen this pestilence that has hit the earth, right? But it says, but we must endure to the end, regardless of all these things that are going on. What comes next? We don't necessarily know when. We don't necessarily know when, but we do know that this is next after this stuff. So that's what I mean. We don't necessarily know the time of when these things will happen. But we do know that there is another part. And there's still more later on that we're going to jump into. Because these things, so it's almost like three parts, right? You have this first part, you have this second part, and then that third part is what? When you see the skies crack and the angels come. That's when you know it's at the doorstep, right? Jump to verse 21. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. So make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. We are in the beginning of those times right now. All right. We are in the time of trouble. We are in the time of that great tribulation that it speaks of. Read on. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Right. So it's letting you know that these troubles won't last long enough for Israel to be wiped out. But again, long is different. Long to me could be different than the long to Amariah, to Aparium, to Sarak, to whoever else. Right. Long, long is based on however the most high sees long. But what we need to watch for is not the measure of time, but the events that are transpiring and unfolding before us. That's what we need to be watchful for. And in that watching, there are actions that need to be done. All right, read on. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall all rise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Right? They will deceive you with their prognosticating, their divining. And they said that it's going to be so precise, right? It's going to, damn, but it makes so much sense what they're saying. It makes so much sense what, I, yeah, I think this is it. I think this is that. Okay, and what if it is? Don't worry, we're going to get to that. What if it is? What if it is? Let's go to Luke 21 and 25. The first thing is to make sure that you shore your spirit up. Nobody should be surprised by what is transpiring. Yes, will it surprise you when you see certain things? You might go to the supermarket and see people fighting with each other over toilet paper, this, that, and the other. Uh, maybe you'll be like, gosh, this is a little you know, creepy what's going on, right? But you still need to shore up your mind. Don't let, don't let your understanding, that light that you have in this dark place, fail you. Luke 21, 25. The book of St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. We are seeing that stuff now. There are signs in the stars and the moon. Upon the earth is what we're seeing, distress of nations with perplexity. They are talking about the International Monetary Fund, talking about how the economy is all messed up. It's, it's not so much that the people are dying. People die. This is the most highest way of equalizing things. Let's, let's get rid of some people. Let's shave some more. That's the thing. Uh, us, uh, Esau trying to prolong things. The most high puts disease and famines and different things in place because he knows what balance he wants to strike. He knows what souls he wants here in the earth and which ones he needs near him. 
But then Esau, with their oppositions of science, try to elongate life. They try to, because remember, the Most High gave us long life. When you look at how long we used to live back in the day, so it's unnatural to try to extend it past your number of days, all right? Because the Most High has a, now does that mean don't get, don't go to medicine and stuff? No, don't get crazy. It tells you honor the physician. But they're always chasing something more, right? You'll see that in sci-fi movies. You see them talking about this genetic thing. They want to upload consciences to put it in different bodies, trying to see themselves as God. They want to be like God, all right? Because that's what God does, right? He takes your essence, he takes your souls, and then he puts it back into a baby. That's mm -hmm. what that show Alter Carbon is like. They found a way to upload the brain and, and who you are, and then they could store that information on a chip and then bring you back into whatever body, whether it's synthetic, whether it's a real body. It's crazy if you haven't seen it. It's actually a pretty good show, like, sci-fi-wise. But spiritually, you see what's going on in that show. And I think they got a second season on it. I haven't seen it, but the first season was good, right? So it's talking about that you have this distress of nations with perplexity, and it says the sea and the waves roaring. Who can tell me what that is? The sea and the waves roaring. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. It's talking about uh, uproars of the people. Do you have a scripture? I was trying to find a scripture, but uh, I couldn't find it. All right. Revelation 17 and 15, I think. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Right. So you guys weren't wrong. It is peoples. It is multitudes. It is nations and tongues. And that roaring is everything that we've seen from the, from the big levels of the governments complaining about the economy, the people dying. To the, to the smaller multitudes going crazy in the stores and all that stuff. That's exactly correct. But you need to have a scripture for that. Because if not, then it's just you speaking, right? So Revelation 17, 15 lets you know that those waters is speaking about people, right? Come on, read on. Verse 26. Verse, wait, where? In, uh, oh, I'm Matthew. sorry, Luke 21, 26. My bad. <laughs> I was like, there's no verse 26 in uh, Revelation. <laughs> Okay, Luke 21, verse 26. Yes, sir. Uh, Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts falling are failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm, so it lets you know that if you're too busy looking for after, right? Remember, we got to be woke, but we have to be sober about it, right? It says men's hearts will be failing them, not being sober, right? Not just fear, but confusion and straying from the scripts. If you spend so much time, listen, I don't need a lot of convincing. This is what I'm telling you. Like I'm, I'm, I, I, I read, I, I read the news and all that stuff, but I filter that out because guess what? I'm convinced these are those, this is the first part. This are those last days. So I don't need to waste my time more on that. I need to be in this Bible. I need to be seeing and making sure that my calling and election is sure. I keep myself abreast of what's going on to watch, because that is one of the things we must do, watch. But if you watch to the point where your mind, your heart is here, is failing, it means your understanding is being washed away. Remember, take heed that no man deceive you, those diviners, those prognosticators, those mediums, which is the media. It's going to make your heart fail you, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, hold on one second because you're looking for those things for the coming on the earth it says when if that's what's going on we should be looking heavenly we should be looking up towards what meaning obviously not yes the sky because that's where christ is coming right but it says that we should be focused on the heavenly why are you so obsessed with what's on the earth right go ahead what do you got Cap? yeah um when uh christ said he said watch as well as pray right mm-hmm but pray doesn't just mean, okay, a hey, God, I love you. Please love me in return. Pray, pray means that you're acknowledging your offenses and you're now applying the laws that you're learning. There's action behind it. There's action behind right. it. We're going to bring that out later in Mark 13. You're going to see that. We're going to bring that out later. There's actions behind it. It doesn't mean right. just sit and do nothing. It doesn't mean just pray and just no, right. watch. Right, right, exactly. Because... 
people will take that at face value and think, okay, you know what? Let me just watch oh, the yeah. things going on and pray, and then I'm good. No, it's 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 actions. It's how you conduct yourself every single, not every single day, but every single minute of how you're living your life. Right. So I'm gonna look up the definition of fear, right? Because I gotta I gotta bring this one out. So it's fear. I'm telling you, a lot of us are saying, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I say you're scared. I said fear. Right. There's a difference. Scared and fear are not the same thing. Fear in its most typical form manifests itself in what you would describe as scared. But the actual definition of fear says an unpleasant emotion. Mm. Doesn't mean, oh, oh, I'm shook. But any discomforting. It says an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or threat. So it's a very specific unpleasant emotion, usually caused by a threat, right? Let's go to this next definition in Merriam-Webster. An unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. So guess what, brothers and sisters? All of us are fearful, each and every one of us. But how? You deal with it, how you manage it. Remember, I went over the class on fear. Should your fear be the fear of men? Or when you see these last times, should your fear be the fear of God, which is clean? Mm. I'm proud to say, yes, I'm fearful. Because understanding the definition, I am biblically fearful. But I am not fearful for myself earthly, carnally. I'm fearful because have I done enough? Have I made my calling and election sure? If, if the end really was today or tomorrow, am I numbered? And that's where that fear should be. And guess what? That fear should drive action. It should drive action. And it's either going to drive you away from this truth. This is what he means when he says their heart's failing them for fear of what's going on in the earth. Or it's going to drive you closer to God. That establishing and that building of faith. Watch this. I think I got another definition. A distressing emotion that's aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc., whether the threat is real or imagined. Mm. Whether the threat is real or imagined. So, yeah, guess what? Fear is there, but which fear do you have? Which fear do you have? Because a lot of times we'll say fearful and brothers run away. Oh, I'll get defensive. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of none of this. Guess what? I guarantee you, each and every one of you has had an unpleasant emotion about what's going on right now. Let's call it that, right? Because fear has a negative connotation, right? Especially when we're dealing with manly men. Right. Oh, no, I'm not fearful. Okay, but have you had unpleasant emotions about what's going on? You're damn right you did. You're a liar if you're saying you haven't. But it should be that clean fear. It needs to drive you to the most high. That's where it should go, right? So wake up. Stop fooling yourselves thinking that you're not scared. Read on. verse. Uh, actually, read verse 26 again. And then we're going to verse 26. Up. Read on. Go ahead. Men's heart failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers and of heaven. Then, We're going to get to that. We're going to talk about the powers of heaven, all right? That's dealing with the, the powers of the kingdoms on this earth, all right? That heaven is dealing with kingdoms, all right? Come on. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, right, then we'll look. Up there. So it says, and then, so we're, we're going through the parts of those signs of the end so that we can be a light and be sober. Yes, this is one of those trying tribulations that has never been, right? We use the term unprecedented. But there's more parts to this. And it's going to lead to where we get to what? where we see the sky crack, where we see the, where we see Christ come. Hold this, let's get Isaiah 31 and five because it tells you how he's gonna come. We're gonna go through a, a few scriptures talking about the clouds. We must prove all things. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 31 and verse 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. I was letting you know, how do birds fly if you've ever seen them? They fly in like this V formation, right? They got a leader and then they space out and they come in and they swoop in in this V formation, all right? So it says that's how that coming of the Son of, of, of uh, God is it going to be, like birds flying. Let's get Revelation 1 and 7. Revelation 1 and 7. It's Revelation. Revelation. It's like that uh, movie, um, Mighty Ducks, when they were like flying V, flying V, <laughs> right? He, he took it way back. That was your childhood movie, Mighty Ducks? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's right. It is. It's that fly. It's the flying V. That's how they did it. Uh, Revelation what? Cap I'm sorry. Uh, one and seven. Yes. The book of Re uh, Revelation, chapter one and verse seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds on the earth shall well because of him even so amen so it's letting you know it says he come up with clouds the clouds that he's speaking about is the chariots all right it's not them little cute rosy cheeked right that we use some oh the little angel figurine collection in a puffy cloud looking no remember there's another scripture that says he's coming to invade with his troops so it's not going to be a nice thing and he says, and every eye will see him. It's not going to be some secretive thing. That's why that, that show Messiah made me laugh. Because I said, if Christ's coming back in these times, he ain't coming like this dude came. You know what I'm saying? Like, he basically came back to do, like, the modern version of what he did during the time of the disciples in that, in that show. Christ is supposed to come back this way this time. And when you see that, that's when you know that the end is close, that the end is near. Jump to, ver uh, and stay in Revelation. Let's get uh, chapter 14 and four and verse 14. And while you do that. 14, verse 14. The book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. And I looked and behold, a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand, a sharp sickle. Right? So it says, he, he said, one like the son of man, he came upon the cloud, which is those chariots, right? And it says, and one like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand, a sharp sickle. Damn, I had it up, and it's not up here now. Hold on, I've got to look for it. It says, a sharp sickle. Angel of the, let me see, sickle. Hey, Kev, can I uh, say something? Good. Um, listen, Christianity paints this picture that Christ is coming back and he's giving out hugs and, you know, he's giving out lollipops and roses and whatever. Listen, Christ was the first creation of God. He was the first thing that was ever there with the Most High. And so he knew from the beginning that he would suffer a very painful death at the hands of knowing that two thirds of the people still won't repent. So you think he's coming back happy? He's coming back pissed off. So think of it like that. When, 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 when that's why what the prophets had said, listen, I would rather be dead when the Lord returns because it's going to be a, a day of darkness. Right, Christ, exactly. Christ, he's not exactly. coming back. To, happy. He, he's coming back pissed off. Right. Well, look at a sickle, right? Christ, Christ is like the angel of death that they've depicted, all right? It mm. says he's coming back with a sickle in his hand. So that's not coming back to bring peace. He's coming loaded. Look, that's a sickle if you look over there to the right. And then what's the typical angel of death thing? What does he use? Mm. The sickle. Right. The sickle symbolic of that. Look, you got that one on the right here that I enlarged. So it's letting you know that Christ is coming to literally cut heads with that sickle. He's going to cut them heads. Literally. 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 Let me stop sharing this. Yeah. All right. So he's literally coming 
to cut heads. It says that's the vision that all the earth is going to see. He's mm-hmm. going to come in that V formation to invade and he's going to have a sickle in his hand, right? Let's go back to uh, Luke 21 and 27. Let's read that again. And then we're going to go back to Matthew. Luke chapter 21, verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Yeah, because that's it's going to be so majestic. And his power is going to be with that power to kill who he needs to kill. That baptism by fire, right? Mm. Let's go to Matthew 24, 27. We're going over that this virus, yes, is the beginning. It's those first, it's that first part. But there's still a lot of events that have to happen. In what time? Remember, he says the days will be shortened. So they can happen quickly. They can happen at a medium length. They can take many more. We don't know. But what we watch for is the signs, not the number of years that something's going to take. Matthew 24 and 27. Did you read Luke yet? No. St. Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's letting you know how his coming's going to be. He likens it to the way the lightning comes. Because lightning just, boom, real fast. You don't even know which way it's coming. It's not like it comes down slow and you're like, you could track it and say, oh, I think it's going to land right there. No, lightning is going to come in a flash, right? It says that's the way the coming of the Son of Man is going to be. It's going to be in an instant when that time comes, right? Come on, read. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the, the eagles be gathered together. And that's going into the prophecy of the birds feeding on the carcass of kings, right? Of the kings of the earth. Read on. We're going to go down to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So that's just like what we read in Luke when he said the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. So when all those parts are fulfilled, right? And we have started with this pandemic. When all those parts are fulfilled, right? It says immediately after all those things. Remember, the pandemic is just one part of it. It says all those other things that we've gone over until this point, right? Remember us being persecuted, like locked up, all that stuff, everything else that it spoke about. It says immediately after the fulfillment of those times, you're going to see like the lightning strike. And it says the sun and the moon will not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens being shaken is that all the technology, all those satellites, everything Esau got up there with these other nations is going to start to fall from the sky. All right. If I had more time, I was going to do a visual of like when they show like in certain movies, like a a spaceship crashing or I forgot there was a movie recently where they showed like um, the satellites falling. It looks like a shooting star. All right. Mm -hmm. Remember the context of how these things were relayed to us. The term satellite wasn't in existence yet. Right. The term, you know, GPS and, you know, 5G, 4G, all this nonsense that wasn't there. Yeah. That's another thing. And people talking about the, the virus is caused by 5G. Shut up. So what if it is, idiots, 5G? It don't matter. Everybody talking about, oh, the 5G is burning your way. So 4G should have done it. That's the divinations. That's the diviners, the prognosticators. They're letting men deceive them instead of going by what the scriptures say. All right? Listen, listen. Let us be overthrown and die with good uh, cell phone service. Right. I want <laughs> raising fast speeds so that we can do class like this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, 5G, who cares? <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, okay, so if it is killing you, what what you, what you gonna do? Can you stop the 5G? Right. You gonna you gonna Boom. go back to a Nokia 3310? Mic drop. Boom. Be quiet with that nonsense. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. Talk about that. Hey, that's that fear in the head and their hearts failing them off that BS. Read on. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon sh- shall not give her light and the stars shall fall shall fall from the heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall and then shall appear this, the, the sign of the son of man in heaven. 
and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And the sign and they shall, is what we just went over. Those three scriptures that I gave you, Isaiah 31, 5, Revelation 1, 7, Revelation 14, 14. That's the sign of the son of man in heaven. Come on, read. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Come on. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of the heaven to the other. Right. So and the heaven, meaning this present kingdom, they're going to gather together his elect from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. And you're going to hear a great trumpet. Right. Not the way we were blowing that trumpet. Hey, that reminds me. Hey, when the little boys do the little trumpet, it reminds me of that scene in Harlem Nights where they were shooting with the big gun. And then the little guy was like, pa. Ah, he got so vexed by the little gun, he cursed him out. What are you doing with that little piece? If y'all see Harlem Nights, you know what I'm talking about. If not, that's a funny movie. Go watch it. No, <laughs> right? well, that's but, hilarious. Yeah, because we're blowing the trumpets, and then and then you hear the little trumpets. It's like, burr, burr. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, oh, let's go. Man. Let's go to Mark 13 and 23. Mark 13 and 23. The book of Mark, chapter 13 and verse 23. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Hey, so now we're expounding upon what he said in Matthew when he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. So what he's really saying is, Take heed. Because I have foretold you all these things. You don't need somebody else to come tell you some conspiracy theories of what this, that, and the other is going to happen. The only reason that that's important or relevant is if it matches with what Christ has showed us, what the Bible has showed us. Come on, read. Mm. Verse 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And again, it's and, talking about what we just read in Matthew. So now he's saying it again over here in Mark. Come on. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Right. So now we have to look to this and say, what then was me? What must we do for that? So now we're going to read verse 28 and we're going to go a little down. And he throws a parable at them. And remember, this was only to certain disciples like we read earlier, right? When I think it was uh, earlier in Mark 13, where he said they pulled them privately. So he's telling all this to Peter, James, John, and Andrew privately, right? Because they were the ones that needed that uplifting in spirit. Because they're asking him this. And he said, hey, just now you read in verse 23, take heed because I foretold you all this already. Like basically, why are you asking this? I foretold you all of this, so don't be deceived by anything. Read on, verse 28. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So he says, listen, you can look at the fig tree and you know when summer is going to come based on that. Nowadays, Esau, Esau, again, trying to, with their changed times and laws, right, going into trying to control something that they can't control, they tell you uh, the summer equinox is on uh, June 23rd or whatever day they pick, and mm -hmm. they, they pick that day because the sun's at its highest peak. No, right, just like with spring, how the Passover moves, right, based on the moon cycles, they try to tell you that, no, spring starts this day and that's it, right? The Bible's telling you, and he's using this parable, he goes, hey, just like you look at a fig tree and you see that the leaf is tender and it starts to bring forth leaves, when that happens, you know, hey, summer's near, right? Come on, read. Now he explains the parable. So in like manner, when ye shall see things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Because when you start to see all these things, because remember, they asked him when 
is this going to happen? And he didn't say uh, Jan uh, December 31st, 2012. Mm. He didn't say uh, uh, Y2K. He didn't say 2020 uh, of April uh, when, when the coronavirus deaths peak. He said, when you see these things, just like you're able to look at the fig tree and do this, there's signs. He goes, mm. Yeah, in like manner, when you see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, that it is near, even at the doors. And I'm telling you, with this virus, yes, brothers and sisters, you're seeing the first part of these things, meaning that there's much more. There's many more events that have to unfold, but we are in that time, right? Come on, read. So, I'm sorry, so, verse 30, verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all of these things be done. And that's that's going into regeneration because that generation is long dead, right? Andrew, uh, Peter, all of them, they said they're dead. But he's letting you know about regeneration. So he's saying this generation will not pass until all these things pass away. Come on. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He goes, listen, all types of basically all types of things are going to happen. But my words were not meaning none of these shall fail. None of these prophecies shall fail. The Bible is a true book. Let's get first Thessalonians five and one. Because what he's saying with the parable of the fig tree is the same thing that you see in the fess. First Thessalonians five. And the one. Thess, the fess, baby. There we go. Man, Christ, Christ did not play, bro. I'm telling nah, bro. you. <laughs> I know good. not everybody's getting it. Not everybody's getting it, right? But you read you nah. you reading this and you're like, damn. <laughs> bro, yeah, Christ, Christ Christ was a monster, bro. Insane. Oh. Yeah. Uh five and one, you said? Yeah, five and one. Uh first Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. But of the times and the seasons, brethren. Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right. So he said the same thing like Christ said. He goes, hey, take heed. I foretold you all these things already. But he says, my brethren, especially after today, right, because I said some, I got to remember that not all of you have been exposed as much as maybe we have with some of this stuff. And there's still so much more that I gotta learn. I'm telling you, every time I prepare a class, every time I read, even stuff that I've read before, all praises to the most high, I, I see a more profound understanding in scriptures that maybe have come out years ago, maybe that came out weeks ago. And as things happen, they make more sense to me as time passes, right? That, so we should always pray for the most high for more understanding in that stuff. So he says, uh, you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes a thief in the night. You should know this after today for sure. Come on. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Hey, didn't we have, uh, they were saying the, the greatest economy that we've had, like in the longest time right now. Things are going so great. Peace and safety. Look at this. All these different things being brokered. Yeah, you had the little tiff with Iran that went on. But they're talking about peace, safety, everybody uniting, the money's flowing, the global economy. Remember, it's all about mm -hmm. commerce. We brought that out when I went over Babylon in Revelation 18, right? It's yep. all about commerce. And he says, when they shall sell peace and safety, then sudden destruction. It's like all this unfolded within a matter, a matter of months. A matter of months. Come on. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And that's what Captain Aparin was talking about earlier when he talks about a woman in travail. There's contractions. And mm -hmm. the contractions, they can quicken quickly. It can take long. Sometimes you're in labor for a long time, right? Sometimes they're spread out. Sometimes you get, they have certain ones that are, they say are not true contractions, so on and so forth. But this is the beginning of that. They're already telling you when you read in the news, this is what I'm saying. You got to read through the lines of, the, of those divinations with the veil of the scriptures, right? And it's telling you that they said things are never going to be the same. There's a lot of opinion pieces about how this is going to change the world. And listen, and not necessarily for the better. They're talking about different types of things, right? Whatever it is, digital currencies, all this. So what? Guess what? We got to use it. Oh, she ain't going to eat. So if they do it, get, hopefully my Bitcoin hit. Right? We all go eat. We all go eat. <laughs> we all go eat. All of us Come on, read. 
<laughs> but ye brethren are not in darkness that the that that day should overtake you as a thief. And you know what? And I think that's my biggest gripe when I see brothers and sisters bugging out. Because you should know that that day is not yet. You should know that, yes, it's the beginning of those times, right? I've said that. I think I've said that enough to be clear. That it's the beginning of that, of that stuff right now. But that day is not going to overtake us as a thief. Not if you keep yourself rooted in the scriptures. This is what he means. Don't fall for those vain words. Come on. Verse 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober and sober and sober and i'm going to do a separate class that goes into breaking down sober minded and what that really means but essentially the short version of that means you're sober because you stay on these scriptures you stay on this understanding and that's why when we read in luke what he says men's hearts failing them for what they're watching upon the earth, it means to stay sober-minded. Don't be overtaken. We are the children of light. Like we read in Isaiah 9 and 2. All this death, we walk in the shadow of death, we have been illuminated. They talk about the Illuminati. We the real Illuminati with what we have. Everybody else, they just, uh, all those conspiracy, trilateral commission, whatever. Listen, those are the ones that the Most High set up to pull these strings in this present kingdom. We are the real illuminated ones. Because we know what the beginning was and what the end is, and what the beginning is after the end of ja after the end of Esau, which is Jacob. Right. Come on, read. For they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith of love, and, and for in helmets. Of hope of salvation. Right. That's talking about what we read in Ephesians, in Ephesians 6. This is why he says in these times, this is what you need to put on. Read verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So we, he have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation as unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me get... Um, Go back to Mark 13. Hold on, because my, my notes are a little chopped up here. Hold on. No, I'm saving that for the end. Luke 21, 20. Oh, no. I want 2 Peter. Hold on. I want 2 Peter. I think it's 3 and 10 I want. Let me make sure. Hold on. Yes. Second Peter three and ten. Second Peter three verse ten. The book of Second Peter chapter three verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Right. So this is talking about a specific plague that's going to come upon the earth. Right. He calls it a plague in another scripture. And we're going to read that in a moment. Right. So read verse 11. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in to be in all holy conversation and godliness. Right. So he says, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. Right. He says the elements will melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in shall be burned up. He said, seeing that all this will literally be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Our only job in looking and watching for this stuff is to be prepared by knowing what we are seeing and then doing our diligence according to the scriptures. That's why I say, so what if you know all this stuff? So what if it looks like these are the signs? Yes, it's important to know because we need to be in the light. Here's Zechariah 14 and 12. We're going to read a little bit about what he's talking about here, about the elements melting with fervent heat. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're kind of almost done. Maybe another 20 minutes. Zechariah 12. <laughs> he, said, he said, we're kind of almost done. Kind of. <laughs> we get through this. Like, right, I wanted more. I had to cut it because I said that I'm going to get cut and I don't like two parters, but I think I'll be able to finish. Zechariah like, 14, 12. The book of Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And like I said, for the sake of time, I wasn't able to set it up, but it's like that scene in Terminator 2 when she sees Judgment Day, right? And she's by the fence watching the playground, and then the nukes drop. The, the, the Most High called it a plague because there was not a term back then through the prophets to say a nuclear weapon or nuclear destruction, nuclear fire. This is how you get the elements to melt with fervent heat, right? It says the flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And that's why Peter said, seeing this, in what manner of conversation should you be? Seeing that all these things shall literally be dissolved. You know, you put sugar in like water or coffee and it just disintegrates. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's dissolution by liquid. Dissolution by fire is nothing. Nuclear fire, it's not even ash. It blows away. Read on. Verse 13. It shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Right. So it's letting you know, again, giving you some more parts to look for. Christ gave you like a concise version. As you go and search the rest of the scriptures, it gives you more signs of the end times. Right. So if you wanted the concise version, that's Matthew 24, that's Luke uh, 21, that's Mark 13, right? But here we're reading a little more that before this stuff happens, it's letting you know there's going to be a great tumult. That's the sea and waves war warring, right? That's the tribulation like never has been. And it says, everyone will land his hand against his neighbor. Talking about the love of many will wax cold because iniquity abounds, right? You're going to see betrayals and all that stuff. Read on. <laughs> And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen around about shall be gathered together, gold and silver, and and apparel in great abundance. So there's a light after this, right? This is why it says we should look and seek towards making our calling and election sure. Because the important thing at the end of all this is that if you truly believe that you're seeing these end times, and trust me, brothers and sisters, we are. You're seeing events unfolding in front of us that are the last days, right? The beginning is near, right? Not the end. The beginning is near of our mm. fruition. That's how we have to look at it. The end is near for them. The beginning is near for us. And it says Judah, meaning Christ, is going to fight at Jerusalem for us. And when all that is done, the wealth of all the heathen round about is going to be gathered. We're talking about Bitcoin and digital fake paper money, right? Um... There's a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island. I have it. I haven't been able to get too into it. And it just talks about the fallacy of paper money. And uh, I mean, look, I was laughing the other day when I was reading the IMF because they're talking about how they're going to release more funds and whatever. And I'm like, but again, it's, all, it's all BS. It's not based on nothing. It's not based on nothing, this money stuff, right? This stimulus. They were in debt, but all of a sudden they got two trillion and then they got another trillion that they're going to put out. Yep. Put it right back in. Yeah, that's it. It's numbers. I laugh because it's numbers on a computer screen at this point. They're not sending this money in trillions to anybody. Yeah, you can go. You know what cash is? Cash is the avatar of the digits in your bank account. Ah, ah, that's true. That's exactly what that is. That's a good point. It's a, ah, ah. You, know, you know how, like, on, if, you have, if you have the iPhone, you know, not like Andrew who can't afford it, but like, that. no, maybe Andrew has something like this. You know, you can make your avatar, right? There we yep. go. You know how you can make your avatar, like, you know, your little emoji that supposedly looks like you and they have apps and stuff like that. Money is just the physical manifestation of this digital illusion that we call currency and stuff. Matrix. Like, right? 
digits, digits on the screen. And then yep. we're going to, get to take it out in cash. It's just the physical representation of those digits. So that's why I laugh because when they say that they're going to do all this stimulus stuff, most of you, this is all going to go in direct deposit. They're not necessarily sending a check and stuff like that. And even if they did, the check is not money. It's like, anyway, go because I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. Come on, read. Well, if you can just uh, illusionally put some more digits into my account for me. Oh, that, oh that, money that, is that. a defense. We need, we need some more of that illusion. But anyway, ver verse 15, come on. Uh, verse 15. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of the beast that shall be in these tents, and, of and this plague. That shall be in these tents, as this plague. So it's letting you know that this, this nuclear fire is going to touch everything, right? Come on. It shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king of the Lord of hosts and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come of all up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So it's telling you that after all these tribulations, after, remember, Christ, it said that Christ and the angels are going to gather his elect from the four corners of the heavens, from this present kingdom. So this is talking about after the, the new Jerusalem is set up, right? That all these other nations are going to have to bring tribute and we're going to take of their wealth, right? Come on. And if the family of Egypt go not up to come and come not to have no rain, there shall, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. And in this one, it talks about the feast of tabernacles in Isaiah 66. It says from new moon to new moon. So it's letting you know that they're going to have to, you know how they force Christmas on us? New Year's, Mother's Day, all that stuff. They are going to have to pay taxes. They are going to have to pay tribute, right? Mm -hmm. Tax evasion is going to be a punishment for them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. there's another scripture. Uh, I forgot where it is that it talks about. It's basically there's going to be a highway that goes straight into Jerusalem, and it's and they call it something like the Highway of Holiness. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the Highway of Holiness. You know, how you got a highway they call the Jackie Robinson Parkway or this memorial highway, we're going to have a highway called the highway. So they're going to know exactly how to get to us. You know, you got the interstate. They're going to have a highway called the highway of holiness to bring mm -hmm. us all this tribute and to come and mm -hmm. celebrate our God, the black Messiah. Right. And you better hurry up too. They better not, they better bring that thing quickly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah. You know, hurry up. No traffic jams. None of that. There ain't going to be no excuses. All right. Is you going to be able to uh, uh, yeah, won't be uh, uh, yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. minutes late. <laughs> it uh, won't be as crappy as the Jackie Robinson Highway, though. Hey, it won't be as crappy as Joe. Let's go back to 2 Peter 3, right? And verse 10, and we're going to read down to verse 12. 2 Peter. Actually, to verse 13, we're going to read. 2 Peter 3 and 10. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And we just read about that, what in detail, in Zechariah 14 and 12, right? Read on. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And this is the point that I'm getting to, Right. All that's our only job is knowing and seeing that these signs are there. And then our diligence, according to the scripture, is if we know that this is coming, if you see that these are the signs being fulfilled in these last days, then what manner of person ought you be, ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Come on. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Ah, looking for and hasting unto the coming of God, meaning make haste. If you believe that these times are like that, don't be fearful. Get yourself together. 
be more fervent, be more loyal, be, have more devotion. Come on. Looking for and hasting unto the, com the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Oh, man. And the elements, the heavens will be on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Y'all think it'd be hot when it's like 120 out here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something different when that happened. Come on. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So it should be something where fear is exhibited, right? It gives you an unpleasant emotion. But if we do our diligence to, to, to make our calling and election sure, to haste unto the Lord, understanding that, hey, if all this is going down, all oh, praises, because that means we're closer to that new heaven and that new earth where they're going to bring all that stuff. Hey, I want to see the highway of holiness. I want to see all these nations. I want to be able to look up from one of the towers in Jerusalem and be like, oh, look, they're coming. They're coming to give their tribute for tabernacles. Isaiah uh, 35 and verse 8. Isaiah 35 and 8? Yeah. Isaiah just uh, sent it to me right now. So what's it say? It says, and in highway shall be there, and the way, and it shall be called the high, or, I'm sorry, it shall be called the way of holiness. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's the highway of holiness that the Bible speaks of. All praises. I know they were probably looking for it. They're like, wait, oh, that's so hot. Where that? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I, forgot, I didn't write it down. I forgot where it was. But it's called the high, it's called the way of holiness. That's the highway of holiness. All right. Uh, like, oh, what's that script? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get Luke 17 and 24. We're almost done. We're almost done. Okay. 17 and 24. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 24. For as the lightning that lighteth that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Here it goes again, talking about that lightning as the parable, as the similitude to how the Son of Man is going to come. Come on. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Right. So it says first he's going to suffer many things and be rejected of this generation, meaning this present generation, which they did. And the many things was his crucifixion. Come on. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day of Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So it's letting you know that that moment when he comes, things are going to get better after this virus, after this epidemic. We're going to go back to what may seemingly be some normalcy, even after all those tribulations that we read about. They're going to say, wow, we came through it. The world united. We did this. And then it says immediately after that, it says immediately that he's going to come like that thief in the night. My hair stand up when I think about that, because that means we're going to, it's going to get, it's going to get worse. There's worse things that are going to happen, but then it's going to seemingly seem like things are okay. And it said immediately after he's going to come after that. So don't worry about this pandemic and this virus thing. It's going to get better, but there's also going to be tribulation in there. How long it's going to take, what's going to happen after this, Lord knows. Right. But we have to what? Seeing that the elements will melt with fervent heat. What what person, what matter of person, what we ought to be? Come on, read on. Verse 28. Likewise, also, it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built it. But the same day that Lot went. Out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. All right. So I said, even thus will it be in that day when the Son of Man is revealed. Come on. Just like it was in Sodom, just like it was in the times of Noah. In that day, 
He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. It says, hey, in that, in that day, when you see that Christ is coming that way, don't worry about trying to gather your things and all that stuff like that, right? It says, just get yourself ready. Come on. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Right. I so it says, remember, you, 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 the, when that time comes, don't worry about this present world. Don't worry about your things that you have here. Come on. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be girding, grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. So it's letting you know how that gathering of his elect from the four corners of the heavens that he says is going to happen. And it's letting you know that in that day, this is why it's so important that if you really think those end times are near, what manner of person ought you to be? And in what conversation? It says two, two will be in a... Uh, one bed and the one shall be taken and the other left. It's just meaning don't don't get lewd and talking about that they smashing in bed. It's just saying you may have two to a house. You may have two in a field, right? When it says grinding, right? Because Israel thinks grinding and Benji's thinking like grinding, like, oh, dancing, right? <laughs> it's not talking about grinding up another person. It's saying people are going to be working. People are going to be at their jobs. People are going to be in their beds sleeping. And it's letting you know, not all, it's not saying that everybody in the household won't make it, but it's saying not everybody like that. It's not going to be that way. Don't think your whole family might go. It might not be that way. It's letting right. you know that he's going to take one from here, two from there, so on and so forth. These are just numbers to give you an example. Right. So when, you know that that righteousness is scarce. When you, when you read in um, the second Ezra, okay, uh, I, I can't think of the, exact scripture right now but, but when you read in second Ezra, basically it tells you that um the same way that it's like a like a wave that's like coming right mm -hmm. like that wave is is big that drop from that massive wave that's what's going to be saved that's crazy or the, or the mustard seed when it says yeah. liken it to like a seed it's a small right. remnant that's going to make it but small, small could be a lot. It could be a large number, right? Because we know 144,000 for sure. And then you have the mixed multitude. But small amongst billions is still significant. But what you see, the abundance of people, the abundance of, of life in general, because remember, I said that plague is going to touch the animals, everything. There's going yep. to be that, that cleansing of the earth. It's an equalization. The earth's not going anywhere. But, you know, Esau is not wrong when they talk about overusing the resources and all that. That's another thing they're talking about, that in this shutdown, you know, you got all these uh, Mother Earth people talking about the Earth is healing itself. It's kind of true. The sky is a little bluer. You don't see as much smog, right? Hey, the birds, man, they're acting different, man. Yeah. Y'all notice that, man. They're, like, happy, man. If they, Yo. Yeah, I'm serious. No, 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 no. I've been noticing this outside, man. Like, yeah, it, it sounds funny, but you all it it's is funny because it's true. You all in like it's true. I've been noticing that thing, man. Listen, I got the scriptures for it because I, I had it written down. Yep. 21 and 28. And we're going to go to Romans 8, 19, one of my favorites. No? Pull that now? 28. Yeah, bring it up. Your birds ain't staying in front of the cars anymore. I didn't fly away like they used to back in the days. <laughs> 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 birds ain't uh, suicidal no more, right? <laughs> Skills again. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Luke 21, 28 first. Okay. Yeah, and then Romans 8, 19. Sorry. Luke 21, 28. I got one, two, three more scriptures. The book of St. Luke, chapter 21, and verse 28. Oh, sorry. 
verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, John 9. And that's how we should be. That's how we should be in these times. Yes, obviously, some of us are getting sick. Things are happening, right? Remember, the horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord at the end of the day. So it says, but when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, draweth nigh. Now, Romans 8, 19. It's, what, it's, what, 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 it's funny that you said that because I was going to talk about this, that you notice a difference by this great number that's going to die, you notice a difference. And more importantly, I want to tell you what that redemption is, right? The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Right. Our redemption is the manifestation of the sons of God. Because when all the earth sees Christ and all the angels, that's when all the earth will know who the sons of God really are today. That's today true. they call us anti-Semitic. Today they say, yeah, you got freedom of speech so long as you don't say that you're the Israelites. Today they, they, they disdain us and we're a proverb and a byword in all nations. But when we got that highway of holiness, when Christ returns that day, that's our redemption. Our redemption is the adoption of sons. And that's when it gets basically sealed like if it was in paper you know they call it an adoption because when you go to an adoption right you got to go ahead and sign the paperwork and make it official when christ mm -hmm. returned you know how now we want esau to co-sign stuff is when they see christ and the angels that's the co-sign of everything we've been saying all these years but it says the creature it's earnest meaning it's 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 most fourth most thing that it looks forward to is the manifestation of the sons of god read on Verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Letting you know the creature was made subject to vanity, meaning what? You see how they put them in zoos. You see how they, they use the, the they abuse the horses and the animals, um, the, how, how the pollution and everything is messing up their habitats and all this other stuff. It means the creature, they're subject to that. We're above those creatures, right? Even these other nations in their wickedness, the way they deal with the animals and everything, right? They're mm -hmm. subject to vanity and not willingly. They don't want to be. But they have to be because that's how the Most High set it up, right? Come on. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Look at that. Into the birds, the lions, the tigers and bears, oh my. They too are in bondage and they will be delivered from bondage. Nature, what we call nature, which is the creation is the proper term for it. The creation is in bondage as well. They moan and travail with us. Come on. Toby wants the kingdom. <laughs> yes he does <laughs> because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God we can't wait till we empower come on for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now Right. And if you look in this Bible, when this why I said nature is really not the right term, but the creation, I have a little letter next to mine. And it's where it says the whole creation, it says every creature, every creature. So really, it's not nature. Technically, we should be referring to it as the creation. Right. So it says the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. They feel our suffering. Come on. Verse 23. And not only they. But ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirits. So we are still above the creature, but they travail with us, right? So it says we have the first fruits of the spirit, right? Which is, that's those senses that we read about, uh, I believe it was in Sirach, right? Mm -hmm. Where it talks about the different gifts and stuff like that that he gave to us. Come on. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So I'm not making this up when I say the adoption of sons is the redemption, right? That's, and it says the redemption of our body. Remember, we're going to be changed. We're prisoners in this, in this body, in our earthly vessels right now. So it says we're waiting for that redemption. And it says to wit, 
Meaning what I'm talking about is the redemption of our body. Let's get Mark 13 and 33. So there's some good news with all this. It's not all gloom and doom, brothers and sisters. It's not all gloom and doom. It's awareness. It's awareness. It's not all gloom and doom. Mark 13 and 33. Say Mark chapter 13 and verse 33. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. And this is what you were referring to earlier, um, uh, Captain Amariah, where he said when, when he talks about watch and pray, that there's actions behind that. As we read down, you're going to see that specifically. Christ didn't just wasn't vague with us. Right. Thessalonians actually builds on what Christ was saying, what we read in Isaiah, what we read in some of the other prophets. It says, hey, let no man deceive you. Right. We started with that and all the stuff that's going on. Know the times that you're in. And then it says through all this, take ye heed. You need to watch and pray for, you know, not when the time is. So even though but notice how he put this after he gave all the signs. So that caution is there. Don't rest so much in how much time is left. Your rest in that should be watch and pray because you don't know how much time is left. I don't care if you want to say short. I don't want to. Don't matter. The contractions got quick or long. It don't matter. But the contractions have started. But we must still watch and pray. Come on. For the son of man is as a man taking a far journey. Who left his house and gave authority to his servants. So it says, this is what I was explaining earlier about when it says he's going to come like lightning. Why they don't want to give us the time. This is the part that I was speaking about. It says, because the son of man is like a man that have taken a far journey who left his house and he gave authority to his servants. We are servants. And that authority is what we're doing now while he's away. Right? Come on. And to every man his work and, and commanded. The watch and pray is to every man, his work, his work. There's work involved. And every one of us has a different office and a different calling. So what he's left us to do is his work. It goes back to the parable of the talents. And there's a whole bunch of other scriptures. The Bible says the same thing throughout. It's just repetitive because of the hard headed, stiff neck nature of our people. So he says unto every man, his work. Come on. And commanded the porter to watch. And the porter to watch. So there are some that are watchmen and there are some that are laborers. There are some that are both. All of you don't need to be watching spreading conspiracy theories, 5 GBS and all this other stuff. Stay in the spirit and focus on the scriptures. See, that's why the woman is the weaker vessel. You said it was the sisters spreading a lot of that stuff, right? Goodness gracious. And you know what? If you brothers are spreading that BS then uh, you got a, a feminine spirit because that's something that permeates through the scriptures, through the, through the sisters a lot. Bring it out. Spirit. It says, watch, pray, and work everybody to his work. Come on, read. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the, the master of the house cometh. That's why we watch. We don't watch because we want to be the one to know this is the sign of the times, this is the end. We watch, not for the signs, we watch the signs because those signs will let us know when the master of the house is coming. Come on. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, go ahead, go ahead. or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. And he's giving those let different times to let you know that don't, you're not going to be able to devise it. You're not going to be able to tell. If you don't know if it's midnight, you don't know if it's when the cock crowing, you don't know if it's at, uh, uh, at even, you don't know if it's in the morning. You don't know. Nobody knows. Stop being presumptuous. Come on. Less, less coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. Ah, that's why we have to watch and work because you don't want him to come and find us sleep. You want him to come and find you woke fully aware with the full armor of God on so that you're ready. Come on, verse 37. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch, watch. And he capitalized that watch there because he's letting you know 
the watch that he's talking about is a specific type of watch. It's what we just read. He defined what that watching entails. And then he told you again, now I say watch. Because if he didn't, watch would mean, let me obsess over all this. Let me look at this. Let me watch this. No, watching is basically study, pray, apply. That's what it is. Because he says, watch, pray, and work. That's the same thing. Study, pray, apply. Because how do you watch? You study. You study to get yourself together, right? You pray. And then the work is the application. Bishop just called it something different. Christ said, watch, pray, work. Bishop says, study, pray, apply. It's all biblical. It's all of the Bible. So, yes, we are in a time of trouble and tribulation. We are in those times right now. But what that means is we need to be reflecting on what manner of person we ought to be and in what manner of holy conversation we should be in. Watch, pray, and apply, brothers and sisters. Y'all got anything you want to bring up? Yeah, just real quick, just don't get shook, man, because the scripture also says that some of us are going to die in this. Don't don't, don't let that uh, stray away from your faith. All right, you see some leaders die, some brothers die, some family members die. That's all, yeah. part, of the, that's all, that's all part of the prophecy. So keep it moving, man. I know if I die, man, before, you better keep it moving, man. Okay, hey, and remember, uh, the scripture also says um, some are taken from the troubles to come. Right. So, you know, some of us, some of our brothers and sisters might die. They might die from this virus. Right. I mean, so far we've had some fathers that I know of that have passed. I mean, I don't think they were in the truth, any of their fathers. But uh, there was a few captains that they said their fathers and stepfathers have passed from this, um, from the virus. Can I a, uh, a, 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 a script cap? Yeah, go ahead. This is uh, Daniel 11, verse 35. It says, And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So there's there's going to be a falling away. There's, there's going to be people that pass. It's, it's to the benefit of the nation of Israel. Even though we don't see it as that, all things are done according to God's will, and then it's His will is going to come to pass, whether we like it or not. So these things in this in this time is not to shake anybody, but it should just build everyone's faith. All praise to the Most High. Um, it looks like the, everybody's going to be in the spirit on this. Uh, the title of the headquarters class I just saw is Comfort in the Time of Trouble. So we definitely in that time of trouble, brothers and sisters. Um, those will we all continue to stay on. All one line, one accord. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.